So I've just been bombarding you with facts and figures and percentages. But this is just to show you where we are now. But I have a dream. I've got a big dream. And this dream is for Africa and its women. This is a, I want, because, because of what I see today, this is what has influenced my dreams. And I want to tell you some of the big dreams that I have for Africa. First of all, in education, which is, which is very important and which I, which I really believe in, I want to see female literacy rates go up to 90% and half of these reaching the tertiary level. In leadership, I want to see female representation in parliament, in, in parliaments in Africa to go up by 40% and a minimum of five elected female presidents. And people, this is possible. Some of these female presidents. <laughs> it's possible. Some of these female presidents could be members of the ALA inaugural class. They're sitting right beside me. And we know that these, that these women, once they elected, they'll be good leaders because of the curriculum that you're being taught, which I really, <laughs> which, the curriculum which you're being taught, which teaches us to look for the root cause of the problem so as to solve solutions. I want female employment to go up by 60%, and this would be as a result of education. I want, in 50 years' time, I want that healthy woman in Douala to give birth to a healthy child without having to worry about whether the child will die in the first five years of its life. I want that girl in Somalia to walk on her way to school, smiling and skipping and happy because she doesn't have to worry about uh, female genital mutilation or the, or, the, or the risk of being put into an early marriage, which she does not want to because she wants to continue pursuing her, her education. Right here in Johannesburg, in 50 years' time, I want to walk down the streets of Johannesburg and be confident knowing that I will not be at risk of rape or being sexually molested. These are big dreams indeed, and it's up to every one of us here in this room to make sure that these dreams become a reality. This is just the beginning, or we can even say that it has already begun, but it's not up to us to actually push it forward. And now I'm going to tell you how I think that, this, that my dreams can be, become a reality. Our dreams are, can actually become a reality. So the first step is mindset. We all know the power of thought. We all know that a thought can drive you forward. A thought can make you, can make you climb a mountain. A thought can make you uh, cross a river. A thought can make you cross a bridge. So we all know the importance of mindset. And it's up to each and every one of us here in this room to instill that positive mindset to a young girl. Once a young girl believes that she has the power to do anything in this world, she'll be able to do it. And it's not, that, not, not, it's, not, it's not just young girls alone that need to be instilled with this mindset. Also the older women, not, okay, not older women, but also ladies uh, and women should be, should be reminded of this mindset because sometimes life can treat you harshly and you tend to forget. And I have the perfect story to actually illustrate how mindset can actually change a society. So once upon a time, there's a man named Barack Obama. <laughs> Barack Obama was campaigning for presidency. And during his presidential campaign, he always told the story, the story of Lily Ledbetter. Lily Ledbetter was a 70-year-old woman working in the Goodyear tire factory. So she was just about to retire when one of her colleagues uh, passed a uh, uh, passed on a pay slip of a male colleague who had the same job description as her. And what she found out was that the male colleague was actually earning more than her. This hurt her, this hurt her a lot because Lily Ledbetter did her work well. She worked hard for the Goodyear Tire Factory, but she felt as if she was being treated unfairly. And it wasn't just her who was being treated unfairly, also the other women 
who the other women who the other women who are suffering this same predicament. So she decided to do something about it. She took her case to court, and her case went all the way up to the Supreme Court. But unfortunately, she lost the case. But this caught the attention of Barack Obama. And on the 28th of January this year, a bill, the Lily Ledbetter uh, bill was signed where ma males and females of the same job description shall earn equal pay. <laughs> the, unique sto the unique thing about Lily Ledbetter is the fact that she was 70 years old and she was about to retire. She could have just decided to let the, what, what happened uh, just pass on and get her retirement benefits. But she said, no, enough is enough. She wanted to do something about it, and she did do something about it. Even though the court system failed her, her voice was heard. And right now, because of, of what she believed in, because she believed in herself, because she did not leave that, she did not let somebody else make a change, but she decided to make the change herself. Women in America are actually benefiting from her. Then once you, once, once you have that positive mindset, it will drive you forward. It will, it will give you the inspiration and, and it will give you the inspiration and drive to pursue an education. And as I've said before, I can't stress enough about this education. Education is the key to growth.